Paul in his epistles. Nag-aaralan natin yung mga bagay-bagay na ginawa ni Apostol Pablo. Ano ho? Nung nakaraan, alam nyo, when I was a young believer, talagang ang alam ko lang magkakatulog itong Ephesians, Galatians, uh, and then praise the Lord, when I went to the Baptist Church, I learned that uh, these are the letters of the Apostle Paul. Amen po ba? These letters are uh, letters of the Apostle Paul. Yan. Nakita niyo po. Nababasa niyo po ba sa likod? Can you read it at the back? Medyo malapo lang po, ano? So, here is the chron chronology. Yung po pagkakasunod-sunod po ng letter ni Apostle Paul. We know that he got saved and then after that, he went to Jerusalem, Tarsus, Syria, and Cilicia. And then he went to Antioch and, and, and then was sent out there. Nabasa po natin yan sa Acts 13. Tama po ba? Hello? So, when he was sent out in Antioch sa Acts 13, ang unang journey niya, his first mission work is he went to the regions of Asia. Okay po? Dito po para... Uh, ayan, okay? So, ando po siya sa Galatia. Galatia is also a name for the whole Asia Minor. Ayan po siya. Ayan po yung first mission journey niya. Okay po? And then after that, pakatas niya po, bumalik po ulit siya sa Antioch. Tama po ba? After his first mission journey. And, up, and during his second mission journey, before he go out, sino nga yung uh, kasama niya dapat? Sino yung dapat kasama niya? Si John Mark at saka si Barnabas. Kaya lang, di ba nag-away? Okay, nagtalo sila dahil ayaw niyang isama si John Mark. Si Barnabas gusto kasama si John Mark. So what happened? They separate ways. Okay ho? Sino sinama ni Paul? Si? Say silence. So, sinama po ni Paul si Silas in, 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 in this area, kasama niya from, from Antioch, Syria, he went there and then, ano nangyari sa second missionary journey when he was about to visit the churches in Asia Minor? Ano nangyari? Pinigilan siya at RJ, ano? Sino pumigil? The Holy Ghost stopped Paul in, re in, in visiting the churches here. So, ano ang nangyari sa kanya? How, how did it happen? Paano nangyari? What, what changed the, the journey of Paul on his second missionary journey? How did the Lord spoke to him? Speak to him? By a vision. Ayan. And what was that vision? The Macedonian vision. Na, 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 nagkaroon siya ng pangitain. Noon, wala pa kasi ang Bible, kaya ang Panginoon ay ginagamit ang vision and dreams para makipag-usap sa tao. And in his vision, he saw somebody from Macedonia. I don't know how. Hindi ko natin alam kung paano niya nakilala taga Macedonia, but one thing is sure, that man is from Macedonia, and he was telling Paul, come over here and help us. So Paul needed to cross the sea just to reach Macedonia. Ito yung Macedonia, mga kapatid. O yan. This is Macedonia. Are you here? Nagigess niyo po? And in that place, hindi po ganun kadali ang nangyari kay Apostle Paul. His second mission journey is not that easy. Matindi po yung second mission journey niya. Why? During his stay in Thessalonica, anong nangyari? Di ba nagkagulo? He would always go to the Jewish people and preach the gospel, but the Jewish people would persecute Paul. So, ano nangyari sa kanila? Di ba? Sino ang nakuha? Nakuha ba si Paul sa Thessalonica? Sino ang nakuha? What's the name of the person? What's the name of the Christian? Jason. Thank you. So, huwag niyo pong kakalimutan yung iba ha. Noong huli na si Apostle Paul, pinataka siya ng mga kapatiran. Kaya ang, ang kinuha nila si Jason at inireklamo nila, sabi, these are the people who turn this world upside down with the gospel. Ano? Yung gospel nila. Ibig sabihin, ginugulo nila yung paniniwala dito. Are you with me? True belief, the true teachings of the Bible will really turn the world upside down. You will never expect people to be all happy and congratulating you when you share the true gospel. When you share the true God, the God who does not just love but also hate sin, it will turn this world upside down. Kakagulo talaga. Okay ho. 
Pero huwag niyo kakalimutan, hindi lang ang gospel ang bumubulo sa mundo, ha? Pati kung maling mag-uugali, nakakabulo rin sa mundo. Baka naman, hindi, gospel ako, pero nang gugulpi ka, nananakit ka, nagmumura ka, nakakagulo din yun. Okay, ho? So, pero ang maganda, yung magkagulo because you are sharing the true gospel. And so what happened, Paul, from Thessalonica, he went to Berea. And in, in, ano ay yung matatanda niyo sa Berea? The people there were, ano sabi ng Bible? Were more noble. Ang ibig sabihin, mas decent sila. Amen. Hindi sila pag ayaw nila, gusto ka ganun nila, ipakulong. Pinakinggan nila si Apostle Paul sa Berea. And in Berea, there are people who believe in the gospel. And after Berea, he went down here. And then, kasi pagdating niya sa Berea, sinugod na naman siya ng mga nasa Thessalonica. Kaya nangyari, napunta po siya dito sa province of Achaia. Nakita niyo yung Achaia? You know? Achaia. Do you see the word Achaia? It is a province. Palibagong probinsya na yan after, after his journey in Macedonia. He went to Achaia. Una, doon siya nagpunta sa Athens. Mamaya, yan yung preaching natin. Yung kanyang nangyari niya. Ano ba nangyari sa Athens at saka sa Corinth? Pagpunta niya dito sa Athens, yung mga tao masyadong... Ah, uh, superstitious. Marami silang mga pinaniniwalaan. Tapos may hindi lang sila, makikinig sila ng bagong doktrina. So si Paul, the place to go, he took the opportunity. And after that, ang sabi niya, iwan niya doon si Silas at si Timothy, let us meet at Corinth. Are you with me? Hello? Ano nangyari sa Corinth? Yun din yung pag-aaralan natin sa preaching mamaya. Pero ang pag-aaralan natin ngayon, yung konting introduction natin last week, Nung nasa Corinth po siya, nagsunan siya doon sa mga tao ng Thessalonica. Di somewhere here in Thessalonica sa Macedonia. Kasi nga, dahil magandang alaala niya doon, ang ginagawa ko kasi ni Apostle Paul, this is what the Apostle Paul was doing. He would send people, he would send trusted men to certain churches that he went before and he would ask of their affairs. Aalamin, wala kasing call, walang email noong araw, kaya kinakailangan pa na isusugo si Timothy o oh, maiwan kayo dyan, balitaan nyo ako pagdating natin sa Corinth, kayo muna dyan. And when Paul was there at Corinth, Timothy and Silas went to him and they had a meeting. Ipinaliwanag ni Timothy at saka ni Silas yung mga nangyari doon sa Thessalonica. Doon po sa mga taga-Tesalonica. At doon po niya sinulat siya sa Corinth. So, during his second mission journey, Paul wrote the letter in Corinth. Anong letter yung sinulat niya? Yung letter to the Thessalonians. Ayun, nakita niyo, Thessalonians. 18 months siyang nag-stay dyan. Diyan niya sinulat siya sa second mission journey niya. Matatagpuan niya sa Acts chapter 16 and 18. Yung first letter niya na pag-usapan mo natin last week. In-encourage niya sila sa persecution. Ano nga ako yun? Ano? That, that yung attitude ng isang teacher. Paul explained to them what, at, what, ano ba ang dapat na attitude ng isang leader. Another thing na the abundance of the believer. Inaliwanag niya kung paano magiging masagana ang buhay ng isang ligtas. Paano nga? The first Thessalonians chapter 4, ano nga, Sir Chini? Live your life holy me. Mabuhay ka ng may kabanalan. A Christian will never enjoy his Christian life if he will, in, if he will live his life in worldliness. Paul was explaining it to the Thessalonian believers. You are God's people. You need to be holy because your God is holy. Do you get it? And then ano pa? Yung sabi niya? Heartiness. Tatlong H yan. Ano yung isa? Heartily. Magiging masagwa ang buhay kristyano pag hindi tayo marunong magmahal. We can never enjoy our Christian life if we will never learn to love others. Amen? You know yung pinaliwanag niya sa 1 Thessalonians chapter 4 at ano yung last? Honestly. Hindi tayo magiging masaya pag hindi tayo nabubuhay ng matapat. And then on chapter 4 and 5, ano yung last na sinabi ni Paul? Hello? 
Ano kayo muna? Attitude of a leader. Number two, the abundance of the believer. And number three, the assurance of the Lord's return. Pinaliwanag niya yung rapture. Huwag kayong magagalumianan. Huwag kayong okay, malulungkot. Babalik ang Panginoon. Tama mo ba? Now, you send a letter niya, halos patungkol din doon. Nag-report si Silas at si Timothy after a few months at yung nireport nila, eh medyo may kinailangan maayos si Apostle Paul. Okay? So, ready na ba kayo? Ano ho ba yung patungkol sa 2 Thessalonian letter? Nagsulat ulit siya ng letter patungkol sa 2 Thessalonians at ang kanyang isinulat ay patungkol sa tatlong topic. Okay ho? Patungkol sa tatlong topic. Three topics were mentioned in the in the letter of Paul to the Thessalonians in his second letter. Number one, gusto niyang mag-deal ulit doon sa encouragement in persecution. Are you with me? The encouragement in persecution. So mga mahal ng kapatid, nagpatuloy. Alam po natin ang problema na tatapos. Tama po ba? Pero sana ho, maintindihan din natin, hanggat nasa mundo ho tayo, habang tayo nabubuhay para kay Kristo, may mga pagsubok tayong haharapin. Mas malala lang na ho ito eh. Yung sa atin, konti lang, kukutsayin ka lang. Alam niyo sa kanila, pinapakulong, tinatawanan. Are you with me? Even students, listen to me. That's why marami tayong mga isudyante nabubuhay sa carnality, sa worldliness. Kasi masyado silang na, na, na parang napapahiya sila pag hindi sila maayos manamit. Ah, pag maayos silang manamit, tatawanan sila. Pag hindi ka makikipag-inuman sa mga barkada mo, tatawanan ka. Are you with me? Yes. Pag hindi ka nakokopya, pag hindi ka nandadaya. Pero mga kapatid, ang pamumuhay kristyano, ang pamumuhay ng tama sa mata ng Diyos ay mas mabuti pa rin ang piliin natin. It is still better to choose to live a life that is pleasing in God's eyes. Amen? And so you find here that the Thessalonian believers are still being threatened, are still being persecuted. And so Paul encourages a tatlong part. The second Thessalonian letter has three parts. The first part is about another encouragement for persecution. Let us read the verses. Are you there? 2 Thessalonians chapter 1. 2 Thessalonians chapter 1. If you're there, say Amen. amen. Let us read. Paul and Silvanus and Timotheus. You read that? Paul and Silvanus and Timotheus. Sino nga ho si Silvanus? Si Silas. Unto the church of the Thessalonians in God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. Verse 2. Grace unto you and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. We are bound to thank God always for you, brethren, as it is me, because that your faith groweth exceedingly, and the charity of every one of you all toward each other aboundeth. Lumalagudo yung kalilang pagmamahal. Kagaya yung pinag pinaliwanag natin ng First Thessalonians, yung kalilang pagmamahal na magpapaabound sa kanila. So that we ourselves glory in you in the churches of God for your patience and faith in all your persecutions and tribulations that ye endure. Amen? So masaya daw si Apostle Paul sa kanila because despite of the persecutions, they are continually growing. They are continually serving. Verse number 5. Which is a manifest token of the righteous judgment of God, that ye may be counted worthy of the kingdom of God, for which ye also suffer. Seeing it is a righteous thing with God to recompense tribulation to them to trouble you. Naniniwala ho tayo, sabi niya ganoon, na maputi sa Panginoong mata, na hindi ho tayo ang gaganti sa mga nagpe-persecute sa atin. Hello? Hayaan natin ang Panginoon ang gaganti sa kanila. Tayo magpapatuloy, tayo maglilingkod, tayo magiging maligaya sa ating ginagawa. Ngunit ang paghihiganti ay sa Panginoon. Kaya ang sabi niya, verse number 7, And to you who are troubled, rest with us. Are you there? Amen. When the Lord shall be revealed from heaven with His mighty angels, in flaming fire, taking vengeance on them that know not God, and that obey not the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ. Sabi niya, kayo ng mga naniniwala, kayo ng mga nape-persecute, relax lang kayo. 
Kasi ang buhay natin, hindi naman ganun kahabaan. Pagbabalik ng Panginoon, yun ay pagsawalang hanggan, lahat ng kumontra kay Kristo ay tutupukin sa impyerno ng magpasawalang hanggan. Are you with me? In flaming fire, taking vengeance on them that know not God. Kaya hindi mo totoo yung walang impyerno. Meron nung mga religion, they will teach you there is no hell. No. The Bible tells us of an eternal flame. Amen? Amen. Verse number 9. Who shall be punished with what? Everlasting destruction. Another teaching na naman ito naman ito sa Bible. Amen. Hell is everlasting. Hindi ho ito yung isang sagalit lang, you will be annihilated. Okay? Thank God for the Bible, kahit ito hindi yun ang pinakatapit. Maraming mga false teachings ang maiintindihan natin mali dahil alam natin yung patotohanan. Amen? Ang sabi niya ho, ang mga tao dito magkakay Kristo, ang mga tao kumukotra sa Ibanghelyo ni Kristo, ay susunugin ang magpasawala ng God. From the presence of the Lord and from the glory of His power. Verse 10, When He shall come to be glorified in His saints and to be admired in all them that believe, because our testimony among you was believed in that day. Wherefore, we also pray always for you that our God would count you worthy of this calling and fulfill all the good pleasure of His goodness and the work of faith with power. That the name of our Lord Jesus Christ may be glorified in you and ye in Him according to the grace of God and the Lord Jesus Christ. So, sabi niya, kaya ang prayer ko, magpapatuloy kayo, ang panalangin ko, my prayers for you to continue in your faith, continue to grow, wag ko kayong magalumihanan, wag ko kayong magquick-quit. That's Paul's prayer for the Thessalonians. Amen? And the second thing, ito na. Ano yung, ano yung last part ng 1 Thessalonians letter? What was the last part? of the first Thessalonians letter, the assurance of the return of Christ. So, in, in 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, are you are you here? In 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, Paul explained to them, not just in letter, not just in letter, in chapter, two, in second letter, you we will find that it was not just in letter that Paul encouraged the believers about the return of Christ. But actually, during his stay in Thessalonica, during his stay in Thessalonica, eh, tinuro niya na yun. Okay, ho? So, parang mga review na lang yung mga letter niya. During his stay there with them, he already taught them about the rapture. He already taught them about the return of Christ. Kaya alam mo, medyo may konting pagkakamali sa iba. You have to expect that. When you teach right doctrine, not all will believe. Kagaya nga ako nito. Eh, nung Sunday school natin, yung iba sa ito, hindi pa rin pala naiintindihan. Kaya inulit ho natin, nireview ho natin, para maintindihan ulit natin. Ganun ho yung nangyari. No, nung sinabi ni Paul na babalik na si Kristo, pwedeng may mga mana ng palataya. Akala nila, babalik na talaga ng, talagang advance tayo. That time na, next week na yan. Kaya sila, yung iba sa kanila natakot. Are you with me? Uh -huh. So, to the carnal, listen to this, Christian, and to those ignorant believers, yung mga hindi pa ganong nakakaalam sa Panginoon, it could be that the rapture would be a burden. Naalala ko nung ako'y binata pa. Nung ako'y binata pa. When I was a young man, ayaw kong mag-rapture. Kasi hindi ko, hindi pa ako nakakapag-asawa, hindi ko pa na, hindi pa kami kinakasal ni Mom Jess. Sabi ko, pag kinasal na lang kami, tsaka na magka-rapture. Uh, di ba, ganun sinasabi mo? Uh -oh. So, mga kapatid, are you with me? But for a person who truly knows Christ and His Word, you will really enjoy His return. Amen. Ang nangyari, parang naging burden pa sa iba. Somehow, the rapture became a burden to them. Tignan na natin. Chapter 2. Now we beseech you, brethren. Chapter 2, verse 1. Now we beseech you, brethren, by the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ and by our gathering together unto Him, that ye be not soon shaken in mind, or be troubled, neither by spirit, nor by word, nor by letter as from us, as that the day of Christ is at hand. Huwag ko kayo matatakot pag narinig nyo ng babalik ang Panginoon, sabi niya. And let no man, what? Deceive you by any means. Huwag ko kayong magpapadaya. For the day shall not come, except there come a falling away first. And that man of sin be revealed the son of perdition. Tingnan nyo ho. If you would go on Facebook, 
pati ho sa mga messages natin, may mga nagkakalat, mabalik na ang Panginoon, nagtatatak na ng 666. Are you with me? Diba? Yung mga microchips, biochips, may liloko nga ko lang siya, haba-haba, laging sinasensari. There is somebody who always sends to me that message na nagtatataka na ng 666, naglalagay na ng chips, sabi ko, totoo yan. At ang chip na yan ay gawa sa patatas. Kaya ang tawag dyan, potato chip. Ayan. So, na, na, ang ibig sabihin, marami lang natatakot. Kasi, kasi may mga healthcare na, na nilalagay na yung microchip sa loob ng kamay. Eh sabi sa Bible, nagtatak ng 666, nandito, kaya nandito sa loob. So, pag nanagyan ka ng mga Pwede pong yun. Hindi ko po sinasabing hindi yun. Ang sinasabi ko lang, pwede yung maging yun. Pero kahit paanong mabarinig yun, mabalitaan yun na nagkakatatakan na dahil sa mga healthcare nila, hindi po po yun ang katapusan. Kasi ang sabi ni Paul, magingat kayo kasi kailangan niyo maintindihan. Bago babalik ang Panginoon, meron munang lilitaw ng sa aming perdisyon, magkakaroon muna ng one world government. <laughs> Later ho, mapapag-aralan po natin yan sa ating pong uh, uh, lesson ng prophecy. Rapture will occur during the time when the world would be would have one leader. At yung one leader, mag merong lumilitaw na kilala na, hindi man one world government pa, kasi sa, sa tribulation mangyayari yun, may lumilitaw na isang wicked one na talagang sumisikat. At pag lumitaw na yan, yan yung antichrist. He would be the antichrist. Okay? So, that person, pag yan lumilitaw na sa mundo, yan pwede nang bumalik ang Panginoon. At saka ang ikalawa, ano sabi ng Bible, walang nakakaalam. In the day that knoweth no man, the rapture will occur in a day when nobody knows. Ang ibig sabihin, yung exact date wala. Naalala nyo, in the States, merong pangalan ho, eh, si Mr. Armstrong. He, he said to his members that uh, Christ will return on December 12, 2012. Ang nagtataka ko, babalik na ramang Panginoon, bakit pinapa-offering niya lahat ng pera? Eh, saan nila gagamitin yung offering? Hindi eh, nagbabalik na nga ang Panginoon. Diba? So, ang ginawa ko ng mga miyembro, binihinta yung mga ari-arihan nila, binihin nila sa offering lahat yun. Ang mga days. Ang ibig sabihin, wala, hindi dumating. So, sayang ang lahat ng kanilang pinagpaguran. Huwag ko tayo madidisip ng ganun. Huwag ko kayo maniniwala pag may magsasabi sa inyo, babalik na ang Panginoon. Oh, ganito na, malapit na ang end of the world. Ito na ang climate change, nasisira na ang lahat. Huwag ko kayo matakot doon. Okay ho, mawawala lang ko ang mundo pagkatapos ko muna sinasabi ng Biblia. Hindi ko nagsisinungaling ang Bible. Yung mga sinabi ng Bible patungkol sa Israel, all the things that God has said about Israel, it happened. It happened. And it's happening even right now. Di ba sabi ng Bible na ang Israel hindi magkakaroon ng kapayapaan? And right now, Israel has no peace. Ang sabi ng Bible, wala na makakatalo sa Israel. Right now, mabalik at defeat Israel. And yet, the focus of history right now, or, or God, in history right, or in our time right now, is the church. Tayo po yun. Mararapture muna tayo bago magkaroon ng one world government. Okay, ho? Yun yung pinapaliwanag ni Apostle Paul. Ano? Na, 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 na don't be ever deceived. Okay? Now let's, let's continue reading chapter 2 verse 4. Who opposed and exalted himself above all that is called God, or that is worship, so that he as God seated in the temple of God, showing himself that he is God. Remember ye not that when I was yet with you, I told you these things. You see? Verse 5. Hindi ba naaalala nung magkakasama tayo? Di ba tinuro ko sa inyo yan? Thank God for the, the, the design of, of, of God in the Bible. The Apostle Paul taught them things of God. Tinuruan niya itong mga taga-Tesalonica. Okay, are you with me? Verse 6. And now ye know what withhold it that he might be revealed in his time. For the mystery of iniquity doth already work. Only he who now let it will let. Ano po ibig sabihin niyang pastor? There is a belief that this, what, ang ibig sabihin sabihin ng let it sa King James Version, siya na pumipigil. The one who is, uh, uh, actually, uh, uh, hindi who letting na pinapa, nilelet niya. Ang ibig sabihin ng let dyan, not letting. The old word let, eh pastor, bakit pa kasi yan ang ginagamit natin? Kasi mas marami yung mali sa beto, hindi yung mali ito. This is an old language. Okay po? Yung pong mga new language, pag yun naman ang ginamit natin, ang daming tinanggal, ang daming mga walang salita. That's why we use this Bible so that we can uh, we can know what is the clear word of God. Kaya lang kung may mga old word na 
na may meaning naman mo, kaya may dictionary. Tama ho? Nag-guess yun po ako? Para yung Constitution ng Pilipinas. Hindi naman po, ay, bago na, millennial na tayo ngayon, baguhin na natin ang mga salita ng, ng Constitution. Hindi pwede, Constitution yun ng Pilipinas eh. Kumuha ka ng dictionary para maintindihan mo yung Constitution. Nag-guess yun po? Ganon din no ang Word of God. Okay ho? Kaya, pag, pag pinag-aralan natin yung salitang ledet sa Tagalog, yung pumipigil. Salamat sa Diyos, hindi pa todo nagiging masama ang mundo kasi may pumipigil pa. At kung pag-aaralan natin ito sa ating pong Bible, in the context of the whole New Testament, the one that led that, the one that stops iniquity is the Holy Spirit of God. Ang banal na Espiritu dahil nasa ating pa, siya pumipigil sa kasamaan na masyadong lumipana. Doon na napakarami na masasama. Nagkasi yung poko. Pero hanggang nandiyan dyan siya, hindi hula na ba sa Antichrist? And then after that, later we will study that in our prophecy. Tuloy po tayo. Verse number 8. Pag ang banal na Espiritu ay hinayaan na, hinayaan na yan, pagkatapos po ng rapture, verse number 9, or verse number 8, And then shall that wicked be revealed, whom the Lord shall consume with the Spirit of His mouth, and shall destroy with the brightness of His coming. Ayan. Nag-guess po mga kapatid? Yan yung mawawa sa akin ng Panginoon pagdating niya sa kanyang second coming. Pagkating kasi ng rapture, doon lang tayo sa air, imimit natin ng Panginoon, pero pagdating ng second coming after the seven year tribulation, babalik ang Panginoon at yung Antichrist na yan ay tutupogin niya. Mamamatay ho yan. yan ang magiging, kasi magiging great leader yan ng mundo eh. Babalik ang Panginoon para patayin yan at siya ang maghahari sa atin ng isang libong taon. Later na ho natin yung pag-aaralan kasi medyo malalim mo yung prophecy. Okay? Pero may somehow glimpse ang prophecy dito sa sinasabi ni Apostle Paul. Verse number 9. Even him whose coming is after the working of Satan with all power and signs and lying wonders, and with all deceivableness of unrighteousness in them that perish. Sila na mga hindi ligtas, madadaya talaga. Because they receive not the love of the truth that they might be saved. Hindi kasi sila ligtas, kaya sila nadadaya at madadaya. Verse 11, And for this cause God shall send them strong delusion that they should believe a lie. That they all might be damned who believe not the truth, but had pleasure in unrighteousness. Verse 13. But we are bound to give thanks always to God for you, brethren, beloved of the Lord. Because God had from the beginning chosen you to salvation through sanctification of the Spirit and belief of the truth. Whereunto He called you by our gospel. O kayo mga nangapili, tayo una, tinanggap nyo ang Panginoong Jesus. Okay mo? Tayo ay hinirang ng Panginoon sa kanyang ministry, sa kanyang church. Napunta ho tayo dito, sabi niya. Dahil ano? Dahil na nang palataya kayo sa katotohanan. Ver verse 14. Where unto He called you by our gospel to the obtaining of the glory of our Lord Jesus Christ. Verse 15. Therefore, brethren, ano sabi niya? Stand fast and hold the traditions which you have been taught, whether by word or our epistle. So, malino ho ito ha? The Apostle Paul is not teaching us the tradition of men. Ang sinasabi niyang tradition, yung tinuro niya sa pananalita at saka doon sa mga nakasulat. Ang ibig sabihin, no, yung Bible ho natin. The tradition of the scripture. Okay ho? Hindi ho yung nakagawian na piyesta, nakagawian na ganito tradition. No? The tradition that Paul was teaching them personally and in letters. Okay ho? Eh wala na ho ang Apostle Paul ngayon. Paano natin malalaman ang tradition of the Apostles? Yung kanila mga sinulat at sinabi at tinuro. Okay pa? Next. Uh, verse number uh, 16. Now our Lord Jesus Christ Himself and God even our Father which hath loved us and hath given us everlasting consolation, good hope to grace, comfort your hearts and establish you in every good word and word. Ang biro nyo, ang ganda na sinabi ni Apostle Paul, na mga Diyos, ang magpa, ay mag, ay mag, uh, magpalakas sa inyo at i-comfort kayo sa bawat mabuting salita at gawa. Yan ang buhay kristyano. Salita at gawa. Wala yung gawa. Okay? Hello? Oh, so, last part ng kanyang letter. Ito naman, yung may konting problema na kailangan niyang ayusin. Finally, brethren, pray for us that the word of the Lord may have free course and be glorified even as it is with you, and that we may be delivered from unreasonable and wicked men, for all men have not faith. So, ipag-pray nyo kami, sabi niya, 
Pray for us na ang salita ng Panginoon ay maging malaya, may pangaral namin ng malaya at maitaas ang kanyang pangalan kung paano nangyari yan sa inyo, sabi niya. At para kami mailigtas sa mga tao, mga masasama, mga iris, uh, unreasonable men. At tulad ng mga nangyari sa kanila doon, hindi namin na sila ipapakulong, wala naman silang ginagawa. Okay ho? Sapagat hindi lahat ng tao may pananambalan tayo. Verse 3, But the Lord is faithful who shall establish you and keep you from evil. And we have confidence in the Lord touching you that He both do and will do the things which we command you. Sabi niya, nagtitiwala ako mga kapatid na gagawin nga ninyo mga inutos namin sa inyo. Verse number 5, And the Lord direct your hearts into the love of God and into the patient waiting for Christ. So, bago natin basahin niya, ano yung first part ng letter? Encouragement in persecution. The second part of the letter is another explanation on the day of the Lord. Pinaliwanag na naman niya yung pagpabalik ng Panginoon para humas hindi sila ma malito. Ang pagpabalik ni Kristo hindi panakot. The return of Christ is not for you to be afraid. The return of Christ is not for you to to uh, uh, to be burdened. The return of Christ is glory. Okay? And then last but not the least, meron mo siyang exhortation against idleness. Meron mo, meron mo siyang pangangaral patungkol ho at laban sa katamaran at sa buhay na walang kabuluhan. Tingnan, ano ba yung buhay na walang kabuluhan? Tingnan nun natin. Ito ho, pag-aaralan natin. Verse 6. Now we command you, brethren, in the name of our Lord, are you there? Verse 6. That you withdraw yourselves from every brother. So, ligtas ito. This is a saved person. Okay, no? In every brother that walketh disorderly. Hindi marunong sumunod. Eh. Umiwas kayo, sabi niya, umiwas kayo sa mga kapatid ninyo, sana wala ho dito. Amen? Pero pwede mangyari na merong mangyayari ng ganun ho. From every brother that walk at this order, and not after the tradition which he receive of us. Don't forget that tradition. Ang ibig sabihin niya, yung mga lesson na tinuro ni Apostle Paul patungkol sa Christian life. Kasi ho, nagahalo ko kasi lahat. Are you with me? Tayo, bilang mga Pilipino. You have to distinct doctrine Biblical teaching and culture. Nag-get siya po ako, mga kapatid? Hello? May mga pagkakataon na ang kultura ho natin, na kasanayan ho natin, hindi naman ho masama sa Biblia. At yung nga ho iba eh, ang nagsusuporta, halimbawa yung pagmamano, inuturo ng Biblia na magrespeto. Eh tayo ho, eh, meron ho tayong pagmamano, pagpupo at opo. Are you with me? Pero pag pumunta ka sa southern part, sa Visayas, walang po at opo. Hello? So, yung ibig ba sabihin, hindi sila magalang? Hindi. Kasi may Biblia rin naman silang susundin na hindi ho nasa kalawan ng kanilang mga nakagawa yung kultura. Nag-get you po ako? So, may mga mas malalalim pa. May mga mas malalalim pa na kultura. Tama ho? Halimbawa? Halimbawa ho, uh, yung magsuko, Alam niyo yung sukop, yung on the same year, ikakasal yung magkapatid. Huh? Ay, huwag kang ikakasal ka. Teka, kristyano na tayo, ba't pa kayo maniniwala sa ganun? Huh? Nag-gets yung po, mga kapatid? So, as Christians, we have to realize that. Ano ho? So, are you with me? Hello? So, you have to be distinct. Uh, you have, kailangan makita ninyo, yung pang ginagawa ninyo, nakagawian, yan ba'y kulturang Pinoy, o yan ba'y turo ng Biblia? Hello? Kasi pag ang kultura ay kontra na sa turo ng Biblia, doon mo tayo sa turo ng Biblia. Huwag niyo humamalian. Hindi naman ho tinuturuan tayo na porke sinunod natin ang Biblia, magiging bastos tayo sa kultura. Hindi naman ho. May mga pagkakataon lang na nakagawian ay halimbawa ho, huwag naman hong mangyari. Halimbawa ho, ako ho'y mawala. Kunin ako ng Panginoon. Huwag niyo papagalitan si Ma'am Jess kung magkakasawa ho siya muli. Okay ho? Eh hindi, kamamatay lang kahit pa ho. Kahit pa ho next week ho sa mag-asawa. O, oh, pagkatas kong mamatay, hindi naman ho niya gagawin daw yun. Kasi talaga sobrang ilaw niya sa akin. Pero, pero listen, wala ho sa Bible yun na hindi siya pwedeng mag-asawa. Kasi patay na ho ako eh. Okay ho, nasa langit na ako kasama na ako ng Panginoon. Ngayon, ganun din naman ko siya mauna. Pero ho naman ho sana kasi masasaktan din ho ako. <laughs> so, are you with me? Ginigising ko lang po kayo. Pero ang ibig ko sabihin, sana nag-gets nyo ho. Okay ho? May mga nakagawian ho tayo na pag-control sa Bible, yung Bible ho ang final authority natin. The Bible is our final authority above any culture or anything else. Okay ho? 
Nag-gets nyo po mga kapatid? Hello? So, so we find here, uh, uh, Paul was, was telling the brethren, may tinuro kami na maayos eh. Kaya lang may ginagawa yung iba sa inyo na irresponsible na. Anong sabi niya? Verse 7. Verse 7 For yourselves know how you ought to follow us. Alam ninyo kung paano kami susundan. For we may, kami nga na nakatagapagturo na. When the apostle Paul was starting the ministry, he was working. Okay, are you with me? Tapos ito may mga kapatiran. Hindi ko natin talaga alam without I was studying these busy bodies. Okay, ho? Pwedeng dalawa eh. Pwedeng sila yung mga kapatiran na hindi na humihila lang ng pagkain sa mga kapatid. Kasi magkakapatid naman tayo, ha? So, pwede ba sa inyo kung mananahal yan sa Monday? Tuesday, sa inyo ko? Wednesday, sa inyo ko? Pwede yung ganun na nangyari. But on the other part, there is a Roman culture, there is a Greek culture, rather, doon sa lugar na yan, na ang ginagawa ko nung iba, ah, nagiging utusan na lang sila, ayaw na nilang magtrabaho, pagkatas nakikialam na lang sila sa buhay na may buhay, parang ganun ho. But we will read a, 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 a reference, cross-reference sa Timothy, patukol dyan sa mga busy bodies na yan. But let us read first the letter, verse 7. For ye yourselves know ye ought how, how ye ought to follow us. For we behave that ourselves disorderly among you. Hindi kami naging irresponsable. Neither did we eat any man's bread for not. Hindi kami kumain ng inyong mga inandong o ng, 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 ng mga tinapay ng ban. Wala. But wrought with labor. We ate because we were. Nagtrabaho kami sa inyo. Travail night and day. He was teaching them day and night. Nag yung iba, nag tent making pa siya. Lalo sa Corinth, mababasa ko natin, nagkaroon siya ng tent making hour. Okay mo? Ang ibig sabihin noon, doon niya namit si Priscilla at Aquila. Are you with me? Verse number 9. Not because we have not power. Hindi dahil sa wala kami karapatan. But to make ourselves an example unto you to follow us. Kaya kami nagtrabaho para sa inyo, para maging halimbawa kami. For even when we were with you, this we commanded you, that if any would not work, pag may hindi magtrabaho, neither should he eat. Okay, verse 11. For we hear, there are some which walk among you disorderly, working not at all, but are busy bodies. Ito na. Meron kasi kami narinig dyan, may mga busy bodies dyan sa inyo. Ano yung busy bodies? Now them that are such, we command and exhort by our Lord Jesus Christ, that with quietness. Okay, bakit may quietness? Tingnan natin ito. Tingnan nyo, 1 Timothy chapter 5 verse 13. 1 Timothy chapter 5 verse 13. Medyo humabaho. Hanggang sa tumanda si Paul, may ganyang problema. Until Paul reaches uh, old age, such problems are still present in the churches. 1 Timothy chapter 5, verse 13. Kasi dito sa 1 Timothy, may edad na ang Apostle Paul eh. 1 Timothy chapter 5, verse 13. Tignan po natin. And with all, are you there? And with all, they learn to be? Yun na nga, yung busy bodies, idle, mawala nang ginagawa, walang kabuluhan ng ginagawa sa boy nila. Wandering about from house to house. And not only idle, but toddlers also and busybody speaking things which they ought not. Yun ang ginagawa nito. Hindi na nga kung tatrabaho, kaya na lang na kaya gusto mga bahay na binibisita nila. Kung ano-ano pa ang mga sinasabi at dinadandan. Uy, alam mo ba si ganito? Uy, alam mo ba si ganyan? Uy, alam mo ba si ganito? Oo oh, nga, ganyan na nga. Tsaka yun. That is not the work of the people of the church. Amen? Hello? God is against gossip. Tama po ba? Hello, mga kapatid? And so, Paul was warning them, and kayo, sabi niya, kaya kayo na gumagawa niyan, makinig kayo. Kasi mga kapatid din sa Panginoon. Eh. Hindi sila sa demonyo, kaya lang bilang tao may mga ganun mga nangyayari. Sabi niya, this is what you will do. Quietness. Huwag niyo na. Porkit may nalaman kayo sa dito, huwag niyo na sabihin mo na doon. Magtrabaho kayo ng may, ka uh, may, may katahimikan and eat their own bread. Verse 13. But ye brethren, kayo na mga walang ginagawa kanyan. Be not weary in well doing. Kayo naman, huwag naman huwag kayo mapagod sa paggawa ng mabuti at pagtulong. Sabi niya ganun. Verse number 14. And if any man obey not our work by this epistle, note that man, and have no company with him, that he may be ashamed. Okay? Have no company with him, that he may, not be, that he may be ashamed. 
Sabi niya, verse 15, Yet count him not as an enemy, but admonish him as a brother. I-warn niya siya sa mga, Brad, sabi niya nga na, ay okay naman niya, kaya lang, huwag na natin pag-usapan yung mga ganyan mga bagay. Mas maganda siguro, magtapat na tayo, magtrabaho tayo, maglingkot tayo. Amen? Verse 16, Now the Lord of peace himself give you peace always by all means. The Lord be with you all. The salutation of Paul with my own hand, which is the token in every peace. So I write, the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with you all. Amen. That's the second letter to the Thessalonian believers. The church that is suffering from persecution, but continually serving. Not a perfect church. May mga ilang mga problems sila. But praise God, they remain faithful to the Lord. Amen? And praise the Lord, natapos natin yung letter, patunod na tayo sa uh, First Corinthians. Kasi, when, when he went to... Ito. Okay? So, when, when he went to Corinth, doon niya sinulat yung letter niya sa Thessalonica. Ngayon, from Corinth, umuwi ho si Apostle Paul. Okay ho? Pag-uwi niya ho sa Antioch, okay, somewhere there, nagsulat siya ng letter patungo naman dito. Pagkatapos niya dito, may mga na-experience niya. Mamaya sa preaching, yan po yung preaching natin. Mamaya kukunin natin yung preaching. The challenge for this morning will be taken in the story when Paul was starting the ministry here. At dumaan siya sa Athens. So, his ministry in Athens and Corinth, doon doon natin kukunin yung preaching. Pero, hindi lang po tayo mag-challenge, mapapag-aralan din natin. Ano ba mga nangyari habang sinulat niya yung Thessalonica? Ano ba yung mga na-experience niya Apostle Paul dyan? Amen? So, let us all stand up and pray together.